Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us, and welcome to Game Night in the Region on the Region Sports Network, streaming worldwide on the Internet at Facebook.com slash Region Sports and Regionsports.com. We come to you tonight from Lake Central High School as the Region Sports Network presents the Lake Central Indians taking on the Crown Point Bulldogs in the DAC Girls Basketball Showdown. It's 1 versus 10 tonight. I'm Michael Brandon. I'll have the play-by-play -play for tonight's game. And joining me with the color analysis is the coach, Doug Nelson. Doug, good evening. Good evening, Mike. It should be an exciting game. A lot of skill here on the floor tonight. And uh, uh, these guys could see uh, eventually see, guys, uh, see each other again. So it'll be a good one. Yeah, I'm excited for this one. And as a special treat, we are bringing the one, the only, Becky Matea here to the broadcast as well. A little three-person booth here tonight. Becky, it is great to have you with the RSN team tonight. I'm so happy to be here. I, I, I wish, I, I tell my kids, nothing like high school basketball. I wish I was back out there. So yeah. Thanks for having me. It, it is a fantastic adventure. Bodies are going to be hitting the floor, going for rebounds. There is nothing like it. And we're excited to bring you this one between 1 versus 10 here tonight. All right. Well, we're going to try to compete tonight with the, uh, with the band because they are right behind us for this broadcast. So we apologize if you have a hard time hearing us, but it sounds like we're okay for right now. But yeah, I'm excited for this one. Crown Point, number one in the state of Indiana, obviously coming off of a fantastic season last year in which, well, hey, they won a state championship. That's not too shabby for last year. Yeah, they've got a couple guys that might end up being in it, All-Stars. You know, Jessica Carruthers going to IUPUI, and Lily Stoddard going to Purdue to play basketball. So they have the talent, uh, and then, uh, you know, and, and Coach Seibert's done a great job of, of keeping everyone happy, which isn't easy, especially with a skilled team. You know, the, some of the most challenging years I've had were with my most talented team. So he's done an amazing job to keep things going in the right direction. Yeah, and you talked about, you know, All-Stars. Well, we got a 2021 Gatorade Player of the Year in Jessica Carruthers on the floor as well tonight. Lake Central, though, they're not coming in as slouches. Number 10 in the state polls and 10-1 on the season. It'll be interesting to see uh, how this team kind of comes out here and plays against the experience of Crown Point. As I mentioned before when we were talking earlier, you might have an older, mature Crown Point team, but I, I would love a good game, and when you're growing to young talent, anything can happen. And especially we're at home at Lake Central, I think it's going to be a really great game. Yeah, and we are going to have a fantastic atmosphere here. Obviously, you can hear the band behind us. Uh, the student section is roaring for Lake Central, and it, it, it's just going to be a very, very fun night. Can't wait to bring you this one. It is going to have more here on the Region Sports Network after this. You're watching Game Night of the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Hi, I'm Crowell Company's Lantern Man. I'll cover your motorcycle. I'll be with you on the water. I'll be with you on the snow. I'll cover your insurance needs wherever you go. I'll be at Crowell Agency from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. As Crowell Company's Lantern Man, I'm your insurance superhero. Crowell Companies, the insurance professionals in Highland, Maryville, and Michigan City. Did you know? Wow, they'll prepare fresh fish while you wait. Did you know? They make over 40,000 donuts from scratch every week? Did you know? They offer 23 different deli platters for your party? Did you know? They have freshly chopped fajita mix ready to cook. Did you know? They have the best fried chicken in the area? Did you know? They offer our signature curbside service 14 hours a day. Strike and Van Till, now you know. From schools to stadiums, hospitals and bridges. Everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit carpenters.com to learn more. Visit carpenters.com and start building your future today. Four Seasons Mechanical proudly serves Northwest Indiana, providing quality, reasonably priced, reliable service. With a quality and comfort guarantee, the professionals at Four Seasons Mechanical offer a wide range of services in heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Whether it's residential or commercial, Four Seasons Mechanical is there 24-7. To find out more, the website is fourseasonsmechanical.com or give them a call at 219 756 
7020. Four Seasons Mechanical, your indoor air quality specialists. It's been said that one man's junk is another man's treasure, but at Total Disposal, your junk is our junk. Think of Total Disposal as that key player that has several options, commercial, residential, or hand off your junk at our Blaine Street Partners Transfer Station. Total Disposal is more than a service provider. We are an innovator for a sustainable tomorrow, well beyond the curb. For a complete list of services, go to TotalDisposal.com. Honesty and dependability, that's the Total Disposal promise. Java Wave at your local Family Express is the perfect way to get your day started or keep you moving at any time. With 12 freshly ground bean-to-cup flavors to choose from, Java Wave at Family Express has just what you're looking for, whether it's hot or iced coffee. To see all of the delicious flavor options and to find a Family Express near you, log on to FamilyExpress.com slash Java Wave. Welcome back to game night here on the Region Sports Network. Glad to have you back here at Lake Central High School as we are getting set for a big time matchup here between the Crown Point Bulldogs, the defending state 4A champions coming up against Lake Central here tonight. And we are just about under a minute away. We talked about experience. We talked about all this kind of stuff leading up to the game. I, I'm just ready. I'm amped up. We saw a fantastic JV game that went to overtime. It, it's, it, it's electric in this building and you can just feel it. Yeah, it is, and uh, you know, uh, Lake Central pulled it out in JV for the JV game in overtime, like you mentioned, to a, a Crown Point team that's not used to losing. So, um, you know, it was competitive and well officiated, and and uh, slowed us down a little bit, but that that's okay for for a Friday night. Looks like Joe Huppenthal being honored down on the court, getting a nice ovation from the home crowd. I was telling Doug I remember Mr. Huppenthal over at East Chicago. Yeah, yeah. That was a coach at South Bend Clay. Yep. Coach the boys there did a very good job. All right, we are going to get set here for the national anthem. A great rendition of the national anthem by the Lake Central Pep Band just behind us over there. Let's take a look at our Friday night forecast brought to you by our friends at Economy Electric Heating and Cooling. Tonight's forecast, a balmy 37 degrees after coming off a couple of days where it was 60 degrees. So I'm not as much of a fan of this as much as uh, I was of that. Uh, a little wintry mix out there. It's according to my app that says it was out there. Actually, when I was pulling up, it was... Uh, I don't like to use that S word of the frozen precipitation. That's a that's a no-no word in my book. Let's use like sleet. Okay, that's an it S word I can get on board snow. with. Yeah, we'll it wasn't it. quite snow yet. I don't use that word. Either one, very <laughs> dangerous. Yeah. Yes, yes. And unfo I don't like to deal with it. <laughs> All right, so the starting lineup for the Crown Point Bulldogs, number 10, Olivia Santiago has already hit the floor, followed by number 13, Brooke Linsmith. And then number 14, Jessica Carruthers, the Gatorade Player of the Year, followed by Nikki Girodimas. And then Lily Stoddard, number 31, out on the floor. Now for the Lake Central Indians, you have number one, Vanessa Wimberly, a freshman on the team, followed by number two, Riley Malaznik, a sophomore. And we've got number 30, Essence Johnson, a senior, the lone senior in the starting lineup. Anaya Bishop, number 33, a sophomore, and then... Alea Krieger. Oh, 
also a freshman on that team, Ayla Krieger for the Lake Central Indians. So it's definitely a different type of buzz. We were here last week, Doug, and there was, the energy here tonight is so much bigger right now. Well, again, well, you know, I mentioned it earlier. This is the this is the biggest game, maybe in a while, that the region has had for girls basketball. Uh, and and again, like I mentioned, it, it's kind of still a little early season, mid season for girls, or right before the holiday break. But uh, you know, uh, if, I'm sure uh, both these coaches wouldn't mind it. But they could eventually run into each other again in a in a regional here in a couple months. So this might be uh, step one. For sure. And Coach Cyber looking for win number 140 with his career here at Crown Point, number 199 overall in his career. The opening tip is controlled by Crown Point, so it will be Bulldog basketball to start things up. Jessica Carruthers gets the second touch after the tip, trying to feed it into Lily Stoddard, who goes to work in the paint, goes up and gets fouled, and the foul will be committed against Ayla Krieger. Lake Central came out in a man-to-man -man there. They're going to have their hands full all night with Stoddard. You have When you're guarding a big guy like that, you got to try to get her off the block early and really guard before she gets the basketball or the, the, it could be a long night for their defense. Don't let the ball in. Don't let the ball in. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of eyes around the state watching this game. They're, they're both ranked in the top uh, probably 20 of the state. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so I'm sure a lot of people are, are watching the show at the game. Uh, and they're close by each other, so it's been it's a lot of fun. And, of course, any uh, Purdue fans out there watching are looking at Lily Stollard as well because she just knocked down those two free throws for... Mm. As a foul, going to be called against Lily Stoddard, as we were just talking about her on the block. Yeah, Crown Point comes out in their typical 2-2-1 uh, press. Uh, Stoddard was a little late getting there. And when you're late, like I mentioned last week, uh, you're, when you're late, you're foul. So. It's kind of far out there on that foul, too. Yeah, that's a little early for her to be picking up fouls. That's one of the things that Lake Central, you know, a lot of times you might look at like, who can we get in foul trouble? That might be a little That's over aggressive, one. and Crown Point's not a team that you're really thinking about that. Well, Crown Point's here, they're in a little matchup 3 2 zone. Shot by Malaznik there, no good. Rebound comes down to Stoddard. She'll give it up to, San, uh, to uh, Carruthers. Matched up against the freshman, a senior versus freshman here. Interesting mm -hmm. matchup that they put Vanessa Wimberly on Jessica Carruthers. I know Lake Central very up on Vanessa Wimberly, oh, okay. and this bucket good. From Book Lynn Smith. Really nice drive. Yeah, but if you're Lake Central, you want to try to find a way to make someone other than Carruthers beat you. Three point shot put up. Randall's around, no good. Rebound comes down to Crown Point. That shot Ooh, was put steal. up by Ayla Krieger as Wimberly steals going up. No whistle on the bump in the contact. Rebound by Lake Central. She takes it in. Nice. A nice basket put up there. Krieger, her first points. That's the deficit in half. That's one of the things, yes, there's a lot of experience coming here for Crown Point. So you gotta believe Huppenthal's idea says if, if we can keep this close late in the game, we're definitely gonna have a chance. Yep. Stoddard going to work off the back of the iron, no good, gets her own rebound, gets fouled. Oh, and a travel. Oh. There was definitely some contact. The official goes with the travel call. So I a break for Lake Central. Sorry, I think early, you know, with Lily going to Big Ten, she's going to get have to get used to that physical play. Uh, when I saw him play earlier, they were just kind of knocking her off the post pretty easily. She doesn't like a whole lot of that contact, but she's going to have to find a way to enjoy it. Malaznik for three, just off the iron. Another rebound though, hustling for the rebounds. Lake Essence, Central, nice pass inside. Essence oh. Johnson goes up or gets that rebound, gives it to Krieger, but Krieger can't get that one to go. Again, no whistle, and I'm okay with that. Oop. Trapped her up top. Trying to shuffle those feet. Stoddard going into the paint. Puts it up off the window. Yeah, Crown Point is playing that matchup zone like I mentioned. And if uh, that's one uh, negative of playing a zone is giving up those offensive rebounds. Um, and, and Lake Central has a few of them already so far. Johnson trying to find an open... Open player there. Malaznik trying to feed it out to Johnson. Goes baseline with a jumper. Hits the iron. No good. Rebound Another by rebound. Malaznik. Now Vanessa Wimberly for three. She's too long on that one. Stoddard comes down with the rebound. Here comes Carruthers. Stopped nicely by Wimberly here. Goes to the paint. Gets it to the rim. And now a foul underneath. And it's going to be against Crown Point. 
see those Lake Central shots aren't on fouling. Shot. Two on Lily. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the second foul on Lily Stoddard. So that's going to be trouble because she is really a difference maker here. So she's still in the game, and for Crown Point, they do have a check-in. It's Abby Foster in the game. No, I'm sorry. Somebody's coming in now. Oh, Abby Foster was running back to the bench. Now she's checking on, so she'll let the next whistle be back on. Going all the way through the wow. paint. Vanessa Wimberley, this is one reason why Lake Central is so high on her. Over the hands of an outstretched Lily Stoddard, and that's not easy. That's a freshman going against a senior right there. A senior, senior with two fouls, though. She had to be smart and stay out of foul trouble. Brothers waiting against Wimberly here. Brothers trying to drive inside, goes up. There was a little contact there on that ball, but it still goes down for Carruthers. A lot of nice screens and just takes it right in. Yeah, she does, but she, uh, get, if I'm the Lake Central defense, I want to try to push her to her left and don't let her get to the screen. Essence Johnson for three. Lake Central shots just aren't falling right now. But, little, they've, but they've got good chances, though. Little nerves. Losing the ball, Carruthers. Might be pressure, too. Your shots don't fall as good when you got big pressure. And they are going to call the backcourt. Thought there might be a little bit of a tip there, but as Anaya Bishop possibly could have tipped that one, but checking in now officially is Abby Foster for Crown Point with 3.50 left to go. Well, it'll be interesting to see how long uh, Coach Seibert keeps her on the bench. Yeah, uh, It'll be go with the game flow, of course, but uh, she's a pretty important part of what they're trying to do. If I had to guess, I, I, she comes out at the beginning of the second quarter. Again, it depends on if they've got a lead, if they need her. You know, um, but playing this 3-2 zone that they're playing a little matchup, it might keep her out of foul trouble. This one tipped and will stay with Lake Central underneath the basket. Yeah, she got both of her fouls on this end. You know, yes. That wasn't down there. It was on the offensive end. Now, Becky, one thing as we get through this game, I want you to talk about you, you faced a lot of these Crown Point teams back in the <laughs> 80s. Uh, <laughs> I, I want to know a little bit, what, what do you see that's different? What do you see that's similar? And we can talk about that as the game goes along. But, uh, or just how you've seen the evolution of this game, yes, especially on the girls' side. A pioneer of the sport, but um, went to Whiting. Shot was up. Oh, another good rebound. And there's a foul going to be called that time as Essence Johnson goes up. We didn't play as much man-to-man -man in high school. Okay. Now there's a lot more man-to-man, -man, a little bit faster. Good ball movement. Foul is going to be on Nikki Girodimus. Her first, the team's third. I talk to Mr. May all the time, though. Coach May is like one of my, my uh, Facebook friends that's on the high on the list. Mentor, I'm sure, as well. Great guy. Coached the 84-85 uh, state champs, and I saw um, uh, Jessica just eclipsed uh, Annie Kovachkov's yes. numbers. Yes, yes. So. That's quite a feat, by the way. Yeah, 1,190. Nice up. And that one's in. Nice bucket there. That was Essence Johnson getting her rebound. I'm sorry, that was Anaya Bishop that was shooting the free throws, but Essence Johnson. So eight to six, nice game so far. Three minutes left. Oh, another drive trying to go in. And the help defense, really important there for Lake Central. Yeah, again, I, I, I'm, I'm going to try to push Carruthers left and don't let her get to that screen and see what happens. And they're going to call it out of bounds against Crown Point as Nadia Clayton also in the game now for Lake Central. And I'm noticing a lot of arms pushing. Um, they're not allowing that a lot with the boys, but um, I see a little bit more here. I, yeah, a little bit of a push off to with, get some with momentum. The, with, yeah. the, with the arms out, um, just have to. I we guess call that pass interference, if you will. <laughs> depends on your your ref, so they're letting it go a little bit. Well, one of the things, especially as oh, Carruthers still, tries ooh. to save that one. <laughs> Gotta love the aggression, though. From Carruthers on that play, on that pass play there. Well, bo both teams create a lot of offense from their defense. Uh, they try to make the uh, offense uncomfortable and and maybe uh, maybe move them away from the basket as much as they can. But uh, a lot of tip passes. That's a good thing. Disrupting the flow of the offense. That's that helps the defensive team. Johnson giving up to Malaznik there. Three point shot oh, and down. Anaya Bishop. 
So I don't think Crown Point's seen this very much. Nine to eight. They thought they saw their best opponent in Valpo not that long ago. A week ago today, they thought it was their best matchup of the season. This might be it now. Carruthers putting up a three to answer. No good. Tipped on the rebound, rebound. Comes down to Johnson. I'm sorry, to Bishop, excuse me. Gives to Clayton. Clayton passes out. Johnson tips back out to Bishop for three. Just off the mark. Carruthers driving through. Pulls up from just in front of the elbow. Her oh, jumper good. is yep. good. That is where she is really made her money, man. She That, that intermediate area there, 15 to 10, 15 foot area, she is deadly from that range right there. And I'm going to say another great thing is in transition, when you get a rebound and you've got the floor, go ahead and take it. Oh, another three. Riley Malaznik. So back up, Lake Central 12, round point 10. One minute to go. Brother's going to slow it up the floor. And I think this is this is a good call from Crown Point. He's trying to slow things up. Let them get a breath here. Yeah, this is another uh, double high screen for Carruthers. That's what I would do right there is make her go left. Riley Malaznik coming down with the rebound, pushing ahead, finds Nadia Clayton. Now nice feeding pass. inside underneath for Let Judson. I'm sorry, for Bishop. Bishop puts it home. Well, you can go in there with a little less fear with Stoddard sitting on the bench with two fouls, but... Uh, uh, Lake Central's done a good uh, taking full advantage of that so far. What was excellent about that is she let the defender go by, faked it, and put it right in. Yeah, Smart absolutely. Carruthers going to try to take this game over if she can. Can't get it there. The long-range shot from Santiago is no good. It's going to stay down here. Olivia Santiago playing. With her sister not on the floor. Okay. Lake Central's doing a nice job of rebounding on both ends. And that has a lot to do with probably Lily yep. not being in the game. She's Correct. got two fouls. So Carruthers will inbound this one. She gets the ball right back. She had inbounded it to Zilkowski. She's on the floor, Ava Zilkowski. <gasps> and now we got oh. a five-second call. Yeah, she's really trying to do a little bit, uh, a lot on her own right now. Uh, she's got to continue to move the basketball and share the ball and, and move without the ball and maybe get it back. But she's trying to do a lot from the top of the key right now. Do you think That's some of that has to do with Lily Stoddard being on the bench? Sure. She's like, uh, you know, the That's dynamic a big option. duo. Yeah, big I mean. option not there, so probably. But she also she handles the ball a lot anyway. Maldonado on the floor trying to find all these chickens. Here's Zoe Wells on the floor as well. That was Mariana Maldonado. Nice ball movement. Good man-to-man. Well, now they're back. Well, they pick them up, and then they're back in the zone. Yeah, they're a little matchup, though. Okay. Five seconds to go. Oh. Wimberly travels in the paint as she tried to put up that shot. So Crown Point will try to go the full length of the floor with four seconds to go in this opening quarter. 14 and to 10. And we'll have a whole host of Crown Point Bulldogs coming in, including Lily Stoddard. Yeah, she'll come in for an offensive possession here. Well, we, want, we said we figured kind of the start of the second quarter. This is, in essence, almost the same thing as Carruthers. Grabs it. Wimberly trying to keep in front of her. Don't foul. Puts up a shot. Off the window. No good. So the end of the first quarter has not disappointed so far in this high-stakes matchup around the state of Indiana. It's 14-10. Your score, Lake Central on top. You're watching Game Night on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. With electrical services from Economy Electric Heating and Cooling, you can radiate the perfect amount of light and energy into your home. From rewiring and coat upgrades to ceiling fans, lighting, security, and more, Economy Electric Heating and Cooling's trained electricians will make sure you can enjoy your home on full power all the time. For a free estimate on electrical work, call Economy Electric Heating and Cooling at 219-923-4441, and you can visit them on the web at 4ajobdoneright.com. That's the number 4, ajobdoneright.com. Attention homeowners, ready to start your next project? Need to pay off your debt? Refinance your home? Unlock the value of your home with a Centier Bank no-fee home equity loan or home equity line of credit. Stop by a local Centier branch today or visit us on the web at centier.com forward slash home equity. Terms and conditions subject to change without notice, subject to credit approval. Centier Bank, NMLS number 408076, Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. Welcome back to game night here on the Region Sports Network. Make sure you stay with us at the conclusion of tonight's game. We are going to name the Crowl Company's Lantern Man superhero of the game. They are proud to recognize the superheroes on the basketball court. 
Lake Central will start this one as we open up the second quarter here. Lake Central versus Crown Point. Big matchup here around the state of Indiana. Nadia Clayton giving it off to Vanessa Wimberly here on the left wing. Stoddard stayed back in. I'm a little surprised by that. But uh, Coach Seibert's trying to keep it closer early on. Wimberly putting up the three. Stoddard comes down for the rebound. And that's kind of one of the important things for Crown Point. They need Stoddard out there for the rebounds, especially with her height. Yeah, that's our Beating down in the post. Turns. Can't get the bunny to go. And that's a big not. That's what Crown Point needs. They need to make sure that she scores. This one tips. Goes out of bounds. It'll be off the hands of Crown Point. As Anaya Bishop tried to get that one to go. She was wide open. Um, nice pass in. I don't know how they get that look in transition. Um, you got to just... It's kind of an interesting it. spin move that she had in there. It didn't seem very poetic, if you will. Yeah, it was, it was to her left side, and it, it's just something that she's not as proficient in. Uh, if, if it was on the right side, she would have looked a lot more smooth, I'd I mean, imagine. they're moving fast. It does, you know, when you're on the floor, it's a lot different than being up here. So it's, it, and you've got people running. But now we're back on the other end. It's a shot up. Doesn't fall. But they're getting their rebounds. She is getting her own rebound, Anaya Bishop. A lot of hustle. Seven points already for her early on here, and a lot of contact. That's Nadia Clayton going to get called for that foul. You know, they haven't been calling a lot of the tips, but that one, no. she hit the floor, so. Um. Well, that one had a lot of body contact. <laughs> that, one was, that one was pretty blatant. Just waiting for them to officially put that on the board. There we go. So I think these are our first free throws for them. Uh, let me double check. No, we had Lily Stoddard start the game, basically, with the first two points. Seems so long ago. I know. That free throw, no good. They shoot very well as a team, though, for, uh, free throw percentages for Crown Point. Back on the other ends, back to the top, setting up. I love this. I'm writing things down on my scorebook, and Becky's got me on the play-by-play. -play. I love this. Oh. <laughs> helps, <laughs> helps me out. She can call while I'm looking down. I'd, I'd rather do the color. <laughs> oh, she might have a little bit, Yeah, a little carry there Ooh. for Lake Central. Uh, Ayla Krieger. So a couple turnovers on their end. Yeah, and, that really, and that really hasn't hurt Lake Central at this point yet. Yet. You don't want that to mount, though. <laughs> yeah, they add up. They add up quickly. Every, you, you can't say that that one's not an important turnover. Against because Crown they all Point. Turn, they all add up. It's going gonna, it's gonna, to uh, bite you maybe later on in the game. Correct. Jero Demos with the basketball feeding into Stoddard against Krieger. Left wide open, oh. off the window. Krieger tried to sell a foul there, didn't get it. So Stoddard gets her points there. Yeah, she's going to get as many touches as she can while she's still on the floor. Malaznik's long-range shot no good. Coming back there quick. There's a transition. Oh. Others going in. And Carruthers making easy work of that one. Dissecting the defense perfectly here. And just like that, it's a one-point game. Yeah, when she's going to her right, she's as good as anybody. That's a uh, long-range shot out of bounds. That's yep. a turnover, and that's okay. Now that's a four. That's an unforced turnover. That's just Lake Central getting sloppy with the ball there, trying to beat the press. But this is one where now you go down a point. It starts to turn the momentum a little bit. Yeah, that's what we talked about. They add up. You know, that's that's two points you could have got, and two or three points they they can get. So correct. Uh, there's a lot of weird math there. I'm officially on winter break now, so I'm not doing math. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> and I teach health, so I no longer do math. <laughs> Got to drive inside. Blocked Ooh. up top by Johnson. Oh, my. Molly Malazna comes oh. back down. This one tipped. We'll see who it goes to. It's going to be crown point ball. Errant pass, but oh, my. Essence Johnson saying this is my house. You're not scoring that. Again, though, that was a nice, uh, nice hustle by Lily Stoddard there to contest that pass for another turnover. You know, that's, that's three or four here quickly that's adding up for Lake Central. There's a lot of hand touching, and that actually really, you think like, oh, it's, it's an unforced error. But when you got hands flying in your face, Correct. it's not easy. Yeah. Carruthers almost wide open, misses the Ooh. shot. Hey. Essence Johnson was there a Coming little down, bit. Vanessa Wimberly coming down the floor. She puts a little floater Ooh. off the window. Four points for Wimberly, the freshman. So you know why she's so smart? She's stopping before she gets into Lily's zone, and she pulls up and takes a floater. 
that's a great that's a great smart move. That's especially for a freshman. Tries to tip that one out. Trying to weave this one around. Got Lynn good Smith. defense. In the lane. I don't know they're not calling that. Santiago for three. It falls. That's a big bucket, Olivia that's Santiago. So we've got a press going. That is a tie ball game now with 4.15 to go. Now this is not an over the back. All three did not get over. The ball and both feet did not get over the timeline. That's what the, the official is going to call, whether you agree with that or not. This is where a lot of, that, that's a rule that kind of gets mistaken a lot, is you need all three to get over the timeline for it to be a, a backcourt violation. Yeah, that was, that was pretty close there. It's almost another unforced turnover. Correct. Like That's when you're I going against number one in the state, it's probably pretty tough to get the ball across <laughs> half court. I, I would agree with you. <laughs> Lake Central 336 too. now. And it kind yeah. of feels like the air is out of this place right now. Do you feel <laughs> well, they're, Lake Central's kind of killing some time. There we go as a bucket finally falls. Gets the crowd back in it a little bit. And I think Krieger. that's a good idea that they slow that down a little bit. Try to keep the ball out of their hands if you're uh, Lake Central. Carruthers can't get that one high off the window. Trying to put one back up. Lynn Smith, she gets fouled this time, though. Now, one reason why this place may have been stone cold silent for a, a hot minute, with, they're just watching some amazing athletes out here. Sure. <laughs> there's, a pretty, there's, there's some high-level basketball going on, and there's a, you know, Coach Seibert, uh, he's been doing it a while, had a very good uh, run here, and, and Coach Huffenthal, it's a pretty good chess match going on. Both teams with three team fouls now. That's the first time Vanessa Wimberly... <laughs> First free throw, no good for Lynn Smith. She's one of three from the line so far tonight, by my unofficial count. Again, that's, to me, as a coach, just like the turnovers, that's something that adds up. Missed, turn, missed free throws. Yes. That's something that's kind of sticking my craw a little bit. And, yeah, that's something maybe we'll talk about a little bit at halftime. Well, and depending on how close this game stays, I mean, that that's... Games come down to that. Yeah, empty possessions and, and missed opportunities to score. Uh, th th those are hard to get back. You don't get them back. So we have the press to break again. Here comes Lake Central. They're handling it nice and easy. Those are... Stolen away by Carruthers. That's a long, errant pass. Trying to stay inside. We're going to see a push. Short, and quick passes on the yep. press. Yep. That, it looks good, but do never throw that across the court. Correct. I, I'm with you. Yeah, you can't throw the flat pass all the way across. You want to throw a diagonal pass, just the angle with the where the defense is, but uh, that should be two short passes rather yeah. than one long one. Not against Crown Point either. That's, that's the kicker there. Carruthers gets that one at two fall home. That's her first free throw of the game. That is. These are seven points on the night now, and to tie the ball game with 3.01 left to go in the opening half. Two for two. So it's actually been a pretty um, pretty nice game as far as fouls. Yeah, Four Central. fouls to three fouls. That's Correct. pretty uh, controlled. Yeah, pretty good flow to the game, unlike the one we did last Friday. Oh, you guys are putting the announcer's <gasps> cheeks on his ass. As Johnson loses that one. This one put up oh. home a little too strong off oh, the window. She gets it, though. Just handles the ball really nice. That was Zilkowski, by the way, for crown point. So now... They're going in that, what would you call that, Coach? The 3-2? It's a 3-2 matchup. Okay. Uh, watch, she'll chase her out to the corner. It's kind of morphs and changes the offense does. but uh, I like it, though. Yeah, it, it's, it's uh, something different for teams to prepare Three. for. Not falling. Another outside shot. And it must be something that Lake Central is okay with because I don't think they, they would let the freshmen put up a lot of those shots. Really tough shot here for Carruthers, matched up with Wimberly in her face. Here comes Malaznik. All the way through the floor, off the window, and good. Very nice. In transition, now that, okay, now Lake Central's got the press, so let's see what they do with it. You know, I think one thing that they, t they don't talk about with, with uh, Carruthers is, is she's, she's in great shape. She doesn't yes. come off the floor. Th so That is that is something, and, and game after game after game. And yeah. Has she been injured in her career? Uh, That's another huge stat. I'm sure she's got stat. some small ones. Well, air ball there from... Santiago, who has hit a three tonight. 
And that's something that I, I've watched this over the years. If your shots that you normally feel like you normally hit don't go in, that messes with the mentality a little bit later on in the game. Sure it does. But if, like we talked about last, last weekend uh, with the little guards, Mandrean, uh, a scorer just continues to try to score, though. They can't Correct. think about it. They can't hesitate. They can't wonder if it's going to go in. you got to just think next shot. Next one's going in. Correct. It's all about the numbers, right? You guys yeah. are math guys, right? You shoot <laughs> enough of them, some are going to go in. I believe that's the law of large numbers or something like that. It's that's going to be a walk mm. from Wimberley. Certainly a, I wouldn't call that a, a, a freshman mistake, but just she's trying to get through the defense and trying to make the pass at the same time. That's not an easy thing to do is Lily Stoddard will head back out onto the floor. And this is like Crown Point definitely is a different team with Lily Stoddard on there. Yeah, you can tell she, they're bringing her on when they're on offense. You know, there's a less chance of the, her to get fouls when, when they're down here, even though she's got both of hers down here on this end, on this end of the floor. But uh, they're doing a little offense defense here, trying to get as much as they can out of her in the first half and try to get to halftime with only two fouls. So a little bit of pressure here from Lake Central. They're moving the ball up top. Stopping it there. Long pass down to Stoddard. Now Jared Damos giving it up to Carruthers, who pulls up for three, hits the front iron. Jared Damos comes down with a rebound, though, for Crown Point. We got a foul against Lake Central. That's a big rebound for Crown Point. Yeah, but uh, one thing that uh, the, the half-court trap does for Lake Central is it normally gets the ball out of the point guard's hands, which would be Carruthers. Get it out of her hands because she's got to pass it to get over. Uh, you know, and then, then, you know, she eventually got it back. But, you know, it, it does take away also the dribble penetration also that she's very good at. The foul called on Riley Malosnik, by the way. That's her fifth team foul. And we'll have a couple of changes here. Nadia Clayton back in the game. So 22-21 Lake Central. They are matched up. Inbound the play. Stoddard's got it. Santiago trying to get around this defense here. A little switch. Under a minute to play, and they're, put, they're having Carruthers pull back out here. A clear out. Yeah. yeah. Clearing out so she can go. If, I, if I'm Lake Central, I'm trying to push her left. Pulls up the jump shot from the baseline. Tough shot, no good. Johnson comes down with a rebound. Ooh, we a lot got of bodies down hitting on the, floor. the floor. They have knee pads, my mom told me. Wear knee pads, <laughs> yes. Becky. Well, this is, this I is broke the my knee in athletic. college. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, definitely wear the knee pads then. <laughs> this is the Duneland. This is, we, we, they dive to the floor in the Duneland. Yeah, that was nothing. Not, no, no blood yet. We're okay. <laughs> so and they're going to hold out here for the last shot with 12 seconds left to go. Yeah. Down to 10. Elsie's up by one. Seven seconds. Vanessa just now going. Wimberley with three seconds. She As the turn up. puts it up. No good. And that is how the half will come to an end. 22-21, certainly a close ball game, and it's going to be an exciting one down that's toward the great, end. That's a great half basketball right there. We're going to step aside. You're watching Game Down on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Blythe's Athletics in Valparaiso, whose team has been serving your team since 1959, is a leader in athletic apparel and equipment sales. Whether it's off the rack or customized to your specifications, Blythe's has the products and staff to serve you best. Trophies, embroidering, screen printing, athletic shoes, anything you're looking for, you'll find at Blythe's. Visit them today at teamblythe's.com, where the athlete shops. Welcome back to Game Night here on the Region Sports Network. And right down on the floor is they are going to honor the, I believe right now they are honoring track and field. And then they are going to present the state runner-up rings to the Lake Central softball team here in just a moment. We'll have you tuned in to that, a very fun ceremony for the softball team. And, uh, you know, I, 
Obviously, you got Doolin schools like Central versus Crown Point is always a fun Doolin rivalry. But these two played a heck of a matchup. I believe that was, uh, Nathan, you can, regionals, correct? They had a big matchup in regionals for softball, Lake Central versus Crown Point. Again, like a one versus two in the state situation there. So they're, they're top, top teams in the state, yep. excuse me. Top yep. teams in the state. We'll go with that. But through the years, they've been fantastic. So my oldest played for Chesterton softball, so I know a lot of them from, okay. from and we played travel, so um, a lot of familiar names. And just because you said... I played basketball about 20 years ago, 25 years ago, so I've seen kids of the parents that I played with, so it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, that's, that's got to be a lot of fun here. As and we all want to go back to high school and play sports. <laughs> that's our concern. I would play sports. I don't know if I necessarily <laughs> want to stay back in high school. I already teach middle school. I don't know. Well, my body's still mad at me for playing sports in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling aches and pains that I probably did back then, but they, they just don't recover so quickly. We've got the great Nathan Laird next to us as well. He's also agreeing with that statement there, Doug. Yeah. We've got Bob Guerrero here as well. We've got a great crew out tonight to bring this one to you. And I was mentioning when you said Bob Guerrero, I love those synapses he does. Like when he puts all those together, like this is the highlights of this game in mm -hmm. five minutes. It's fantastic. The one and only. If you haven't seen that, um, RSN fans, please uh, look those up. Yeah, they are, they are very, very well done. Bob does a fantastic job for us. Nathan's okay, helping us on the dials here. I call him the Switch Army Knife. This guy does everything for us. He makes sure everything's uh, all coordinated. Now, whether it actually goes there as planned, that's a, that's a, <laughs> that's a whole different statement. And that's what why a, it's so fun. <laughs> what an honor here for these young ladies, some of them coming back after... Uh, some time in college as well. Some of the seniors back to receive their state runner-up rings. So, yes, Lake Central has been very good, and so has Crown Point through the years. Um, we actually, so Leo's at Kansas City, Missouri. We play some of these girls still in college that okay. came from Lake Central and Crown Point. Actually, Miranda Ellis was Leo's all-star roommate down at uh, Indy their senior years. So Leah was out in five, but Miranda stayed out last year, so she's playing for Oklahoma State this year. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Oh, man, we saw some great pitching performances by Elish last year for sure. Well, this corridor here on 41 and between 30, between Crown Point and Lake Central, you know, uh, it's a hotbed <laughs> for, for, for baseball and softball with young people, and uh, uh, they do a great job of developing uh, their young guys, and this is the reward right here. So. Great job, sure. guys. Coach, Coach Sherman does a great job with this LC crew. Yeah. As they have well. a really good pitcher this year going. I believe it's to Loyola. I think somewhere in Chicago. She was a fantastic pitcher for Lake Central. Yes. Always fun to watch it, especially different sports as we go along here throughout the seasons. All right, we're going to step aside for just a moment. You're watching Game Night of the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Did you know? They decorate over 210,000 cakes a year. Did you know? Their butcher will cut your meat your way. Did you know? They have trained floral designers in store. Did you know? They will make your wedding cake. Did you know? They have a variety of deli bakeable entrees. Did you know? Their online app has coupons and so much more. Who does that? Strack and Van Till. Now you know. Hi, I'm Crowell Company's Lantern Man. I'll cover your motorcycle. I'll be with you on the water. I'll be with you on the snow. I'll cover your insurance needs wherever you go. I'll be at Crowell Agency from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. As Crowell Company's Lantern Man, I'm your insurance superhero. Crowell Company's, the insurance professionals in Highland, Merrillville, and Michigan City. From schools to stadiums, hospitals, and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. 
Four Seasons Mechanical proudly serves Northwest Indiana, providing quality, reasonably priced, reliable service. With a quality and comfort guarantee, the professionals at Four Seasons Mechanical offer a wide range of services in heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Whether it's residential or commercial, Four Seasons Mechanical is there 24-7. To find out more, the website is fourseasonsmechanical.com or give them a call at 219-756-7020. Four Seasons Mechanical, your indoor air quality specialist. Java Wave at your local Family Express is the perfect way to get your day started or keep you moving at any time. With 12 freshly ground bean to cup flavors to choose from, Java Wave at Family Express has just what you're looking for, whether it's hot or iced coffee. To see all of the delicious flavor options and to find a Family Express near you, log on to FamilyExpress.com slash Java Wave. The team of sports medicine experts at Orthopedic Specialists of Northwest Indiana is committed to getting athletes back in the game with a focus on not only helping patients recover from injuries, but helping improve athletic performance to prevent injuries. Orthopedic Specialists provides the most advanced, comprehensive care to their patients. To learn more about all Orthopedic Specialists can do to help rehab and prevent athletic injuries, visit them on the web at osni.org or call them at 219-923-3300 orthopedic specialists of northwest indiana providing world-class care to northwest indiana for over 20 years welcome back to game night here on the region sports network michael brander here along with doug nelson and becky mahana and we're excited to have you guys here along with us. This is a fantastic ball game, 22-21, Lake Central on top. It's going to be a good finish. I'm excited. Uh, you guys can pick either one of the teams that you want. Uh, what does each one of the teams have to do to win this ball game? You start, Doug. Well, I think uh, offensively, they, I think they're going to pick it up just a little bit. Both these team, teams ranked in the top 50 in scoring, both averaging over 60 points a game. So. I know they're playing great defense, but I think uh, as the game rhythm happens here and, and Carruthers gets going a little bit, I think they're going to score a little. So the scoring's going to be picking up a little bit, I think. Yeah, I'm excited. So if, if they play the exact same way, it's going to end up like this. But I think what's going to, I think it's going to determine this is what you mentioned is fitness level. Because when you're playing hard, it's who's going to have the endurance and the depth to take it to the end. And, and this is going to probably think maybe Crown Point's got the edge because of the experience. But as I mentioned, we're at Lake Central and home court advantage. Crowds Are they going to be able to dig a little bit deeper with the home crowd? Here, it kind of felt like that helped in the JV game. I think it did. So we'll see how that plays and translates to varsity. We'll have to see how that one goes out. We're just a couple of moments away from the start of the second half. We'll keep it right here as the players go back to their final huddles. Coaches getting their last chance to talk to their to their players. As we're trying to compete against the uh, the pet band here who is very peppy today. And they're doing a great job. <laughs> I love it. Just, we never had that. We never good. had a Friday night game. So um, at least a little bit's come, come a, a ways in, uh, in girls' sports. This drummer's going to be in my nightmares tonight. I can <laughs> promise you that right now. He's on fire. SpongeBob shirt on. Well, now the pet band's leaving, so. Yeah. Well, I think uh, Crown Nathan, Point. Nathan just took a, a very big exhale yeah. for the rest of this broadcast. So did my left ear. <laughs> but uh, I think that they're going to, Crown Point's going to try to go back to Stoddard inside. They have a real advantage with her inside. They tried to go to her early, but uh, she I'll had the two fouls can... and they took her out. Yeah, so... but uh, they were early on. They were trying to get her the ball down in the block. And I think that that will help them. But uh, it's a pretty clean game here. Not a lot of fouls. Correct. But she had two of them, and that was a big difference. Here we go. Now, surprisingly, they didn't wipe the fouls on that uh, for the second half. Yeah, the team stuff. They'll get that done. So Crown Point to start here the second half. Santiago. Now see, I felt a little hesitant on that three. She's missed a couple earlier. That's where I was talking about. It starts to get into your head at some point. Yeah. But as a, a scorer, you can't allow that to happen. Lynn, Lynn Smith tries to put that up. Oh, Another wow. rebound. Lake Central. That was an interesting possession right there for Lake Central. It looked like Wimberley may have stepped out of bounds. But yeah. They, we're able to keep it there. Maybe they were going to say that she really didn't have possession of it. I don't well, know. Well, you could tell she had great court sense because she didn't want to be the first one to touch oh, there it. There goes. One, two. Riley Malosnik hits the front of the iron there. Stoddard comes down with the rebound. Here comes Carruthers now for Crown Point. 
Transition, she uses that screen, shoots around. No good, but Stoddard with the ball. Back up. And she's back up into the points as well. Give her eight on the game. And that's, you know, you talked about it, Coach. That's going to be one of the things that's going to help Crown Point here. As long as she doesn't pick up a quick foul here in this third quarter, as this is a steal from Carruthers off of Wimberley, trying to break ankles, puts it up off the window in the reverse, no good. Crown wow. Point in there to grab the rebound. Gives it out to Santiago. She must have changed directions four times there before she looped it around and underhanded it. Lynn Smith trying to go baseline, trying to go to work, has to pass inside to Stoddard. She loses possession. Here comes That's Wimberley. Right Wimberly, She's nice going to go, gets the oh, whistle, gets the couldn't get the bucket to fall. But she will go to the line. And that foul is against Nikki Gerodemos, who has got two fouls. That is the first team, team foul for a crown point. It's hard to remember this. Vanessa Wimberly is only a freshman. That's a lot of guts right there. She, is, uh, she doesn't play like a freshman. Very She's got nice. great poise. Wimberly. Missing on the first free throw. Now, Coach, you said that they would clear the board. They did give a fourth team foul on the scoreboard here, so that's where that's going to have to be cleaned up here because yeah. they're going to send him a signal. <laughs> we'll get, let me, let's get a hold of Larry. Larry's on the yeah. on the game there. I'm sure somebody. I'm sure. I'm really surprised no one's seen it yet. So were those two misses, two free throw misses, right those there? Those were two misses. Yes, yeah. those are those are Wimberly. critical. Yeah, a close game like this with Crown Point ahead. Ooh. We're defeated inside Jero Damos. They're looking for a walk call, but nothing there. She takes up a lot of space. Stoddard does when she moves. She gets two steps, she's at the hoop. As I was say, the way that Jessica moves, um, does she have a brother by chance that she might uh, be playing yeah. against? Yeah. <laughs> really surprised they haven't changed the... Uh, Scoreboard, yeah. So the, the throws in to Lily Stoddard, shot up, no good. Rebound, Lake Central. Yeah, because they've given that six team fouls now to Lake Central. That is only number one of the half. So certainly something that they're going to have to watch here. And it really surprises me because I know for a fact that the score table down there, that those are that's a, a guy who's been doing this for quite a while. It's so a veteran crew, I'm sure. They yes. didn't change the rules. You know, like when you're going through your day and you're like, somebody changed the rules? How can that be? <laughs> Sometimes it feels like the way sometimes when you start doing things. You're like, wait, that's changed? Stoddard going to work into oh, yeah. the paint. Right in. One, two steps right to the basket. Unstoppable force. Four points here already in the second half. Give her 10 on the day. Yeah, Round that's, that's just the one Ooh, thing that right Lake open. Central does not have an answer for is for mm. Lily Stoddard. Well, and then coming up with empty possessions on this end of the floor is not what you need if you're Lake Central. Down. Yeah, quick shots, missed free throws, and turnovers. Those are... Not good. Those keep coaches awake at night. Oh, straight right. down. Got to keep that pass out of there, but she loops around and right in. And it is just easy work, and that's where we're going to get a timeout called here by Coach Uppenthal. And we'll have to see here. And it is a full timeout, so we will step aside. You're watching Game Night on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Blythe's Athletics in Valparaiso, whose team has been serving your team since 1959, is a leader in athletic apparel and equipment sales. Whether it's off the rack or customized to your specifications, Blythe's has the products and staff to serve you best. Trophies, embroidering, screen printing, athletic shoes, anything you're looking for, you'll find at Blythe's. Visit them today at teamblythe's.com, where the athlete shops. Welcome back to game night here on the Region Sports Network. 27-22, your score. Lake Central has not scored yet, and uh, during that timeout, we believe the officials have just now known, and this is just little nuances from, from us up here in the booth, we've noticed that the, the foul calls is not correct what's pointed on the board, and I believe the officials are just now noticing that, so... Yeah, they need to reset the team fouls. The officials use those pretty closely. The scoreboard's not official. The, the, the correct, correct. Official, the official item, but the scoreboard does help to help the officials' uh, night go a little there smoother. There it goes. And that's, just, and that's just, we might have been the only three to notice that throughout this, this half. Yeah. 
But can you imagine? Because they had six team fouls for Lake Central, so if there was a seventh, them giving one and one, and obviously that would have been corrected right then and there that that's not possible right. this early in the half. Yeah, they would have caught it at some point, but uh, just is one of those things that uh, we've seen enough games that we pay attention to that. Wow. So Lake really Central like going oh, down all the nice. way underneath, oh. and the score by Anaya Bishop. And that's what Lake Central needs. they got to come up with these with these points. They can't have empty possessions when they're trailing a really, really good team in Crown Point. Well, that might have been one of their first shot attempts for the second half because they've turned it over or been fouled. And I think the first one, the time to break the press, too. Yeah. But that's just what they needed. But that was a nice possession. Uh, get it back into a one-possession game. Carruthers. Got another screen coming. Going for the crossover. Trying to fade inside. Puts it up. No good. Rebounded by Jiro Demos. She Ooh. kicks it out to Lynn Smith. She pulls up for three. It's no good. Lynn, uh, Jiro Demos, though, to put it back home. Rebounding is, is, is purely effort. Don't spectate and watch the basketball like it's a firework. You know? Get Anticipation, a, too. Yeah, get a body in somebody. Figure out where it's coming off. Get a body into somebody and go get it like that. Zajeski putting up a three there. That was no good. And that's something that for Lake Central, they seem to be settling for threes. And that's, they're, they're not clicking right now as Carruthers going all the way through wow. the paint there. Santiago okay. gives okay, to Chiro Demos. Who gets it blocked Ooh. by Bishop? And they're going to say Lake Central ball. I'd actually say there's a lot of body on that one, too. Yeah. Well, you talk they're, about they're uh, Lake Central. Uh, kind of keying on the three-point shot. That's the effect that Stoddard has in the game, too. You know, she's a shot blocker just standing there waiting, and even if she doesn't block shots, she still changes the offense of the other team without even having to touch the basketball. Yeah, just looking down there, you're like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got to go against that. Yeah, I'm going to shoot from out here. I'd yeah. Rather. But we have seen a couple times some drives, but they just pulled up before they got her uh, blocking range, so yeah. but not easy to do. And that's just an errant pass. Clayton trying to give it to... Mm -hmm. Wimberly, but not on the same page there. And again, we talked about those turnovers in the first half. That's starting to creep in here again for Lake Central. It's only a five-point game, but those things start to add up after a while. Yeah, and that, and that comes with youth, Mike. It comes with inexperience and youth. Yeah. Um, you have to take the good with the bad. Um, you know, some of the great things they do are going to be balanced out with some of the silly, unforced things that happen. Well, it, what does it say about Vanessa Wimberly right now that Coach Huppenthal has a freshman who's going Ooh, up against takeaway. as Nadia Clayton steals this one. She's going right in. Lot Trying of body. to push. And we are going to have the foul. Now, I find that interesting because to me, that kind of looked like Nadia was pushing her way a little bit in. That a little, happens a lot. Yes. Yeah, when, there's, when they're both moving is uh, a lot, quite often the, the, uh, the it'll go to the, uh, the call will go for the it, uh, aggressive offensive player, sorry, going to the basket. They have a right to get to the basket, and the defender was kind of, you know, bodying her out. Oh, the missed free throw. And that's what's starting to creep in for Lake Central as well. The missed free throws. 0 for 3 from the line here in the second half. Yeah. 0 for 5 in the game. 0 for 5, so that's 5 missed. And that's another miss. And they're down 5. Yeah, that's, so. a, huge, that's a huge difference right so. there. That's, that's, that's math right there, Mike. They're down five, and they've missed six. So. I told you, sir, I'm on break. Yeah. Going to the hoop. All the way for Carruthers. That's the first time she's scored in quite a few minutes there. Yeah. Correct. Give her double digits now on the evening. And the lead now up to seven. Oh, a lot of uh, nice dribbling and moves around this defense. Clayton keeping. But it's a lot of pressure. They can't get it in there. Yeah, they're going to have to slash with, with Stoddard inside. They have to find a way to do it from outside. There Three you point go. shot knocked down, Essence Johnson. And if you can start to, to get them concerned that you can shoot from out, then you're going to be able to get it in. Yeah. Yeah, it'll open That's up the middle. That's a huge bucket. Correct. Well, that's one of the things that right now it feels as Lily Stoddard can't get that one to fall. Johnson loses that one on the rebound. And that's one that you're, if you're a coach, you can live with that. You're at least fighting for it, but you really want that possession on the missed layup. Yeah, you do. Again, that's an empty possession. You had the ball. You know, right I, honestly, I can't believe how many hands are involved in that, and then it's, it's tipping off. I've, I've never really seen that, that much. Trying to feed into Stoddard. Well, she had it swiped away. Hand. Here comes Johnson. 
Even though Wimberley almost lost that one. She pulls up for three, just off the mark. And that's out of bounds off of Crown Point, so it'll stay here with Lake Central. That's the same thing. You got to rebound with two hands. She was kind of, she got to go grab it with two hands. And I think she was trying to remember, am I on offense or defense, and do I let it go or do I grab it? Yeah. Error on the side of, it's not ours. Go get it. Get that rebound. And we've got a check-in here. This will be Mariana Maldonado checking in, and Jared Damos will check out. Four-point game. Yep. Lake Central going to try to inbounds here. Who are they going to get it to? Not easy. Not easy to inbound it to either. That's when, as a coach, you're starting to get real nervous on those. Especially when you start looking to the left in that case, because then you get the basket that you might have to figure into as well. Wimberly giving to Malaznik. That's a Moving nice to her move. left into the paint. Going to the window, and it gets it to fall. That's a beautiful move right there. And a left-handed layup to boot. So with Crown Point leading, can they weather this surge from Lake Central will be the Ooh. question. Little bump there, and that will be a foul on Riley Malosnik. And I have her for her second. We'll have to see. Yes. And that's one of those ones you're just trying to go guard someone, and all of a sudden somebody, they just collide, and yeah. they give you the foul on that, because that was not, uh, not on purpose. Carruthers. Pulls up from the left elbow, drops it home. We're getting close to that time where Carruthers kind of takes over. She does it in third, third and fourth quarters of close games. You watch, she's going to take a majority of the shots, and she's like a closer in baseball. You know, she does an amazing job with the ball in her hand. Well, Clayton not watching for that pass. That's another errant pass between Clayton and Wimberly as Carruthers again. Yeah, you look up, and all of a sudden, she's got 14, 16 points quietly. And just like that, it's up to a six-point game again mm -hmm. with 30 seconds here to go in the third quarter. Clayton gives to Wimberly. Malaznik tries to drive, can't go against Carruthers. Trying to feed down low, Nadia Clayton Ooh. gets fouled on the arm. Or are they going to call that against? No, they're calling that against Crown Point. It's on yeah. Stoddard. Yeah, it's on Stoddard, so that'll be her third. I don't know if you're Coach Seibert with 13 seconds left. You get Stoddard off the floor. Don't let her pick up her fourth foul. Yeah, that'll be Abby Foster checking in now. Now, with three fouls, you're, I mean, you're kind of okay for the fourth quarter. You're okay. But you don't want to pick up a cheap foul here with 13.5. Yeah, exactly. Trying to feed it in here. Getting a little bit of a push, but underneath the foul. The one thing I noticed about the Lake Central younger guards like Bishop, Malosnik, and Wimberly is that you can tell they've played against older people a lot. Yeah. They're not afraid to go in there and be physical. And, and we saw with Wimberly, the floater she had earlier on, she's used to playing against bigger people and older people. Hey, there's our free throw. First free throw made for Lake Central tonight. Anaya Bishop knocks that one down. Five point game. This one rattles around and drops home. Make sure you stay with us after the game as we'll name the IKORCC play of the game. Brought to you by the Indiana, Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio Regional Council of Carpenters. Five seconds to go. Carruthers almost losing that one. Getting that pressure. Puts it up for three off the window. No good. And the third quarter comes to an end. And it, the tables have turned. Crown point is up. 35-31. You're watching game night on the Region Sports Network. The only game in town. With electrical services from Economy Electric Heating and Cooling, you can radiate the perfect amount of light and energy into your home. From rewiring and coat upgrades to ceiling fans, lighting, security, and more, Economy Electric Heating and Cooling's trained electricians will make sure you can enjoy your home on full power all the time. For a free estimate on electrical work, call Economy Electric Heating and Cooling at 219-923-4441, and you can visit them on the web at 4ajobdoneright.com. That's the number 4, ajobdoneright.com. Attention homeowners, ready to start your next project? Need to pay off your debt? Refinance your home? Unlock the value of your home with a Centier Bank no-fee home equity loan or home equity line of credit. 
Stop by a local Centier branch today or visit us on the web at centier.com forward slash home equity. Terms and conditions subject to change without notice, subject to credit approval. Centier Bank, NMLS number 408076, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Her Welcome level. back to game night here on the Region Sports Network, streaming worldwide on the internet, facebook.com slash region sports and region sports.com. We're also going to have a blue collar player of the game brought to you by the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. This is a big possession for Lake Central. They got to stop there. I know there's only 10 seconds for Crown Point, but they got to stop. You got to get a stop and a score and start stacking those up in order to get a get back in the, in the lead here. Well, the nice thing for Lake Central is they start with the ball here to start this fourth quarter. Like a uh, little crown points, a little man-to-man little -man now. Maloznik trying to dribble through. We talked about uh, Carruthers getting to play with her brother. Maloznik obviously gets to play with her brother. Three-point shot is ah, good. Riley Maloznik. Yeah. Doesn't hurt that your dad's the varsity basketball coach here for Lake Central either. Yeah, she's That's probably getting, ac she's getting access to a court all the time. Yeah, Jump into the pass and shoot. Yep. That's what you do. That's yeah. that's awesome right there. She's probably got a set of keys. Jero Demos gives to Lynn Smith. Carruthers in the corner. Dribbling around, going to that left elbow, spinning around Wimberley, staying with her on defense. And she's already had a five-second call. I don't know if they're watching that on her, but she does like to dribble around a lot. Stoddard from the free throw shoots. line, off the mark. Rebound. Nice rebound. Comes down to Zajeski. Oh, the crowd's starting to get into it now. Yeah, I, I, Caitlin Zajeski is doing a very good job guarding Stoddard. And they're going to give her that perimeter shot all night if, if Stoddard's going to go out there. Oh, another oh, nice look move. Look at that. Beautiful. Bishop to the window. <laughs> Who was that? That's Bishop. Anaya Bishop. That's a nice move right there. So she sees Crothers. She says, take this. <laughs> Gives the lead back to Lake Central. And I'm not even sure if Crown Point's been behind after in the fourth quarter ever. <laughs> this is new. This is new for them. Well, Ball comes around. Rebounded by Jero Damos. Elena Santiago for three. It's off the mark. Rebounded to Johnson. There's a long way to go. Valpo had a... Gave Crown Point all they wanted last week. Mm. Wimberly with the floater, no good. Rebound comes down to Stoddard. Carruthers coming up the floor. And you heard, I don't know if you could, I could hear it through my headset, but I heard Huppenthal saying, get back. <laughs> Lynn Smith for three. Just off the mark. Stoddard getting the rebound. Going to work. Short on the shot. It's going to be tipped out of bounds. Ooh. It's going to stay with Crown Point. So when you have somebody that's, five, six inches, you've got to box out, push back, because she's just sliding in and getting those. And really the direction you want to push her is underneath the basket. Push her towards the baseline. <laughs> Don't even let her get an opportunity. Yeah. You've got to be physical and sit on their knees and, and make yeah. it hard for her to get off the floor. We've we got a time a good job, but... We've um, we got a timeout taken by Crown Point. I believe it'll be a 30-second timeout. So we, no, it'll be a full, so we will step aside. You're watching Game Night here on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. So was that... You know. Wow. They'll prepare fresh fish while you wait. Did you know? They make over 40,000 donuts from scratch every week? Did you know? They offer 23 different deli platters for your party? Did you know? They have freshly chopped fajita mix ready to cook. Did you know? They have the best fried chicken in the area? Did you know? They offer our signature curbside service 14 hours a day. Strachan Van Til. Now you know. Welcome back to game night here on the Region Sports Network. What a bunch of fun. Yeah, Tied up, 36-36. No, we've not, got yet. not yet. Not yet. Oh, is it 36-35? Yes. Yeah. Oh, this one looks a little blurry to me over there. Yeah, well, in any case, it is a very, very tight ball game either way. With 5.50 to go, I mean, this really right now feels like anybody's ball game, which from our perspective as broadcasters, we love, we love this kind of stuff. Yeah, it's fun. And like you, like uh, Becky mentioned, is uh, Crown Point's been here, Lake Central. Let's see how their young guys react. But uh, Crown Point's yet to score this quarter, and uh, Lake Central's off to a great start for the fourth. Crown Point. 
Brothers giving up to Santiago. Trying to feed down low, but there is a lot of pressure underneath to Lily Stoddard. Great defense by Krieger there. Yeah, they, they also had help side. And um, she is right in front of her. Essence Johnson was doing a great job playing a little help side defense as well. Trying to get through that traffic. Screens. Here's a shot put up. No good. Tipping it out. Bodies on the floor. It, it comes loose. Up. Carruthers dumps it off to Santiago. Fake nice stripes fake. baseline. Ooh. Blocks it by Krieger. But a foul is called. The crowd loves those. <laughs> but they called the foul on that one. It looked like they might have been with the body, with like the hip. It was a kind of a sideways block. It was clean up top, but I think she kind of got her with oh. the hip. Krieger gets her second foul. And this will send Santiago to the line. She's only got three points tonight. Make it four now on that shot. Make sure you stay with us after the game as we'll name the Crow Company's Lantern Man superhero of the game. The Crow Companies have offices open Monday through Friday. Look, it's another free throw. Crown points back up by one. Sorry, 97 Monday through Friday and Saturday still two in Highland, Maryville, and Michigan City. Elsie brings it across. A lot of pressure, though. Putting her shoulder Wimberly down. Giving it to Bishop. Malosnik nice. trying to feed inside to Krieger. Feeds it wow, back that's out. great ball movement. Oh. Bishop just off the mark. Rebound comes down to Stoddard. Now, sorry, the second free throw from... Santiago, I was looking down. Did she make that or miss it? It went in. It went in, okay. Mm -hmm. It's Carruthers trying to do work, and we got a foul called against Lake Central again. This will be their fourth team foul, which will even them up with Crown Point, who has the lead by one. And the foul is the third on Riley Malosnik, so you're still okay with three here in the fourth quarter. Sure. Crown Point, usually uh, they've run it a couple times, a little lob here to Stoddard. Now they're switching it up. They're going to put her up high. Uh, again, one of these plays here, you always got to find out where Carruthers is. Uh, watch out for some kind of handoff back to the inbounder. And one note for those that were watching, trying to feed it down underneath, Ooh, tipped out Lake Central basketball. If you, wa if you go back and watch that inbounds play, every Lake Central player, and just something I noticed, every Lake Central player is between the ball and the player. Right. Not on the other side where they're, you know, where they can still their opponent can get the ball. They're trying to block the ball to the basket. Yeah, make it make it a make it not easy. Contest every pass. Try to get a tip. Again, like we said earlier, try to disrupt the flow of the play. For those young basketball good, fans good, watching. Good base basketball fundamentals right there. Bishop. Gotta keep that pivot foot down. Gives off to Johnson. Back to Bishop. Malaznik cranks it up for three. Yeah. Her, second the of the, her second of the quarter, and Lake Central up by two with four minutes to go. Thirteen points for Riley Malaznik tonight. A lot of screens up top. Lynn Smith drives in the paint. Oh, there. Okay. And a travel. Yeah, you, you weren't going to like the, the foul call, no, but no. it's a travel. Yeah. And you know, there are very skilled offensive players that can bump around and then get the foul call. And I'm going to tell you, a guy from Chesterton does it all the time, uh, Travis Grayson. You think, he oh, is. You think, oh, 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 oh. He, gets the, he bumps into them, and they call the foul on the, on the defense. He is yeah. so much fun to watch on the court. Ooh, Essence Johnson, very close to that timeline I there. I saw that. I was like, hey, <laughs> that's going to be close. It's really central. You got the clock and the lead. What, how, do, how do you uh, going to react here? Bishop going into the lane, mm. loses it. What They're going to say it's off a of crown point. That's a, that's a debatable call, in my opinion, from our vantage point here. Obviously, the official is a lot closer, so we'll trust their judgment. I like that they're letting the kids play, though. They could have maybe called a foul there, but I like that they're letting them play. Zajeski in there for... No, I'm sorry, I saw the two. That is still Riley Malaznik. Thank you, pardon. Wimberly, 3.10 to go. Got the weave going on the yeah. top. Trying to break There's it down. no hurry here if you're Lake Central. What did we say? Don't let them have the ball. Stay in control. Yeah. Score. And how good is this for their young guys? <gasps> for three. Oh. Off the mark. Krieger. Wow. That's a huge rebound. And what did we talk about? Anticipate where the ball's coming off. Get yourself in position and put it back in. That's, that's a fantastic Krieger rebound. Krieger like doing great job on defense. 
a shot on offense. That might be an IKORCC play of the game moment right there. Yep. She's also doing a great job on, de on defense, forcing Stoddard to catch the ball on the perimeter. This ball eventually is going back to Carruthers here on the left wing. But they got good pressure on it. Yep. Good pressure on the ball. They're not letting her get it. That's the way what to do defense it. defense and a... Are they call a foul out. or oh a timeout. Yeah, okay. A, a five second call. I, I we were getting close to the five second call for sure, but it is a timeout. And we'll see. So the girl that on um, oh, Lake Central that just put the rebound and got the shot back in. What's her name? Uh, Thirty five, Aaliyah Krieger. Freshman. Yep. Fre that's, yeah, that's, that's a, a big great point. Move. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and she's got her hands full with trying to guard Stoddard all, all night as well. So she's doing a great job. It's a, it's been a team effort. Uh, between her and Zajeski. And this girl here, two threes in a very critical time. Yes. Malusnik. Raleigh Mal yeah. Malaznik. Malaznik. Yeah. 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 And then she even had a coach. drive Correct. with the left hand. So, yeah, she's she's got somebody helping her train. So well, she's got say? her she's got her brother. Okay. And, and then you got Dave Malaznik, the head coach here at Lake Central. So there you go. On the boys' side for the past 18. He's in eight, year number 18 now here at Lake Central. When I was looking up the information, you know, our, our the coach at Chesterton was here for a while, Mark Urban, for the Correct. girls. Very good guy. So the, um, the boys coach is, her, is Riley's dad. Correct. Okay. Correct. And she plays like a coach's child. <laughs> yeah, that's... Well, here's the nice thing, is that when you have access to a gym whenever you want... <laughs> that does help. But well, that, well that Doug, and I, Doug and I played outside in the snow, right, yeah. with the hoops on our garage. Yeah, that was a different time. <laughs> you, know, you play in the driveway and shovel just enough. Wait a minute, go outside. What are yeah. you talking about? Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> All right, two eight, two nineteen left to go here. Give us to Santiago, top of the key. A moving now, screen. A moving screen, big call. Uh, for others, I believe. That is on Carruthers, her second of the game, and for the team, that is their fifth. So I mentioned that Crown Point does that all the time, the screens, you have to be really careful with that. Yeah, it's hard when it's right in front of uh, everyone. It's, uh... <laughs> Gives to Malaznik at the top. Gives to Wimberley. How do you guys like to, uh, what are your thoughts on Wimberley's defense against Carruthers tonight? She's uh, done on great on both sides of the ball, hasn't she? I mean... She's handled the basketball. Now she's there's had some turnovers. If you're Lake Central here, you don't want to be in the corner. That's giving Crown Point a oh. chance to trap right there. They call the foul though. Yeah, and that's that's very interesting because I thought Johnson's foot hit the timeline or hit the the half court line mm -hmm. personally, and I think that might be what Coach Seibert is upset about. But I mean, I I'm also as far away from the ball as you can get. Yeah. <laughs> Second foul yeah, on Lynn Smith here. What I was going to say was that you just you don't want to put the ball in trapping positions for Lake Central. Keep the ball in the center uh, and make it more challenging for Crown Point to run around and, and make something happen. They have to gamble here a little bit. Feed is to Malaznik here as they go to another corner with 152 to go. It's awfully close to that half court line, so... They've got it extended out there. Neither one's counting right now. Now, now we've got a five, you know, got to be conscious of a five second here. So she's got to get rid of the ball. And I love that Crown Point has three coaches right now all yelling. <laughs> I mean, that's just, you're, you're getting into the moment. I don't care which spot well, you're on. We got people, as they're telling them to get up, get up, show pressure. We got a lot of coaches yelling from both benches. Well, you got two sophomore, or a freshman and a sophomore out front handling the ball to Lake Central. That's amazing. They're doing such a good job of handling yep. the ball, playing with poise. And Lynn Smith picking up her foul there. Yeah, eventually you gotta you gotta somehow stop this clock. You gotta you gotta somehow get this ball back in your possession here, and that's gonna put Lake Central to the line as that was the so seventh foul. team foul. Yep, they fouled, so we're going to one and one. So now you gotta make the free throws. Yep. But if you're Lake Central right now, you're feeling you're feeling decent. <laughs> I'm better than decent. I'm, I'm feeling better than decent if I'm Coach Coach Huppenthal. But uh, just uh, knock these down and and keep the clock moving. It is a one and see, one, so see, they can't the have thing, the ball. Though. You, you got to make the free throw there. 105. Carruthers. Getting a little double here now, going up against Wimberley, going to the window. 
And we have the foul against Krieger. And I have that for her third. We'll see what the board says. It is her third. Like, like we mentioned earlier, uh, Jessica Ruther's very good going to her right. And she's very good at this time of the game. She's going to have the ball in her hands a lot. Carruthers and knocks that one down. She's the type of player, she's going to she's gonna draw the foul. They're not going to call her for a charge. She's going to get the foul. Yeah, one thing that, uh, you know, as when people ask about her, about All-State, Miss Basketball, stuff like that, one thing I always say is she's, a, she's just a flat-out winner. She just yeah. finds a way to get it done. And knocking free throws down, I think she's at 80%. So that's, that's a huge difference right there because... You missed your free throw on the other end. On the season, Jessica Carruthers, 88%. That's amazing. That's an amazing stat. Coming up ahead, and we'll have a foul here ahead. against Carruthers. That's her third. But this is a good strategy by, by Seifert. Stop. They're not making their free throws. We'll get the ball back. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of like a team hack -a shack You know, let's get it back. If they, they go one for two or even miss the front end, uh, it's worth the foul. Now you get Vanessa Wimberly who comes up here. Free throw shots, 57.5% from the line from the charity stripe. One and one, no good. And that's what Coach Huppenthal has got to be just ripping his hair out for. Well, yeah, that's what we talked about with you. And I got the screen coming. Carruthers. to the left with a shot. That one off the mark. Lake Central no coming good. up with the rebound. Malaznik, ball's on the floor. They're going to say out of bounds. Lake Central ball. Yeah. The ball was loose, it hit her foot, and went out of bounds. Great effort by both teams uh, on the floor trying to get a loose ball. We got a whistle here. We will have the play of the game presented by IKORC, the Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio Regional Council of Carpenters. And we will have a timeout call here by Lake Central to draw something up here. Now, did he want the timeout and he's getting it? What is the, I don't know what the conversation was about. That's going to be a full timeout. So we're going to step aside. You're watching Game Night here on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Hi, I'm Crowell Company's Lantern Man. I'll cover your motorcycle. I'll be with you on the water. I'll be with you on the snow. I'll cover your insurance needs wherever you go. I'll be at Crowell Agency from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. As Crowl Company's Lantern Man, I'm your insurance superhero. Crowl Company's the insurance professionals in Highland, Maryville, and Michigan City. Java Wave at your local Family Express is the perfect way to get your day started or keep you moving at any time. With 12 freshly ground bean to cup flavors to choose from, Java Wave at Family Express has just what you're looking for, whether it's hot or iced coffee. To see all of the delicious flavor options and to find a Family Express near you, Log on to FamilyExpress.com slash Java Wave. Welcome back to game night here on the Region Sports Network. 40 seconds to go here in this game. We were just talking during that last timeout. Free throws. Lake Central, 2 of 10 from the line tonight. Crown Point, 10 of 12. Becky, you said it perfectly. Maturity. Yeah. Yeah, if uh, Lake Central's not able to pull this one out tonight, uh, uh, they'll be able to point that, uh, you know, look at that and some of those silly turnovers they had early on. It's a two-point lead for Lake Central with 40 seconds to go. They get the ball. Got the pressure on. It's in, though. Give inbound to Bishop. Probably going to foul, though. Johnson. <gasps> Bishop Whoa. hits it. Stolen away. Off the window. Layup good. Zoe Wells. Got a step to the basketball. Bishop got a little lazy there. See if she can oh, turn the corner. Oh. Stolen block, block foul. <laughs> Zoe Wells, hero, and then gets the foul. Save this game a little bit for Crown Point to make it interesting. And we'll have a check in and a check out here. Jared Damas checking back in. It's a great, great, great defensive play there by Zoe Wells. You can see, they're, again, they're doing a little offense defense. I do have to add, though, at the end of a, a hard-fought game, you are a little tired. So I think mental, you got to really get mental toughness in there, too. Wimberly oh can't make the goodness. free throw. Got 20 seconds. It's all and tied up. Crown point with the ball. You could take two guesses who's going to take this last shot. But Wimberly staying on Carruthers. Eight seconds. 
She's gonna Tied go with ball five. game. Carruthers for the win. Off the mark, we go to overtime. Yeah, you gotta drive and try to force the officials to do something, but uh, Lake Central did a great job of pushing her left and keeping her in front of her. Yes. We're gonna we're gonna step aside. You're watching Game Night of the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. The team of sports medicine experts at Orthopedic Specialists of Northwest Indiana is committed to getting athletes back in the game with a focus on not only helping patients recover from injuries, but helping improve athletic performance to prevent injuries. Orthopedic Specialists provides the most advanced, comprehensive care to their patients. To learn more about all Orthopedic Specialists can do to help rehab and prevent athletic injuries, visit them on the web at OSNI.org or call them at 219-923-3300. Orthopedic Specialists of Northwest Indiana, providing world-class care to Northwest Indiana for over 20 years. Four Seasons Mechanical proudly serves Northwest Indiana, providing quality, reasonably priced, reliable service. With a quality and comfort guarantee, the professionals at Four Seasons Mechanical offer a wide range of services in heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Whether it's residential or commercial, Four Seasons Mechanical is there 24-7. To find out more, the website is fourseasonsmechanical.com or give them a call at 219-756-7020. Four Seasons Mechanical, your indoor air quality specialist. Welcome back to game night here on the Region Sports Network. Michael Brander, Doug Nelson, Becky Matea here at Lake Central High School. We told you it would be a good one. It has lived up to the expectations. Lake Central crown point. Another overtime. 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 Nathan's been saying that. Overtime. Overtime. Here Nathan, we go. Nathan loves overtime. <laughs> this is the, overtime is the media's worst enemy. Four minutes on the clock this time. The Four minutes in the overtime less. here in the fifth quarter. The tip controlled by Crown Point. These first, this first minute is going to be telling as to who's going to have this game. Yeah, again, it's going to be interesting. They're going to try to get the ball uh, back down to Stoddard down in there. She's working. Jero Damos driving to the lane. Stops, picks out to Stoddard. The way to come up high. Unfortunately, I don't think anybody's in foul trouble. So uh, I don't have anybody in four, no. So, so when you go into overtime, that's a concern. But, he, but here it's, it's okay. Carruthers, her shot goes got down. Got Doug, you mentioned it. This is the time where things turn for Carruthers. She just goes, she, she digs deeper from some other well, if you will. Well, that's why she's given the title the Gatorade Player of the Year and stuff like that that she's earned. Bishop nice off the window, too strong. Almost gets a rebound. We got a jump ball. Nice so it'll be Lake Central ball because it started with Crown Point to start the or to start the overtime. So it'll be an inbound underneath the basket. Either way, you talked about this kind of being maybe a, uh, a, a transferring of the guard. We're seeing some really good Lake Central basketball here tonight against a fantastic Crown Point team sure. that we know is good. They've had, they have a state championship to the record. It's been since, I believe, 1994 since Lake Central has won a state title. I yeah, have that note somewhere. I was somewhere. gonna remember, you uh, uh, can't go without saying Kelly Clara in yeah. this gym, yeah, so right. she's a fantastic player. Coach Medjesi did a great job here at Lake Central. So I think when he said transferring the guard because Lake Central is so young. Right. And they're doing a fantastic job. Johnson. Ooh. Whoa, big shot. <laughs> that was, she's playing with poise. But Johnson is their senior, so yep. there you go. Very One nice. One point lead for Lake Central, under 2.30 to play. And now here's the thing. You're, you're up, Lake Central's up by one. Crumb point likely not going to get nervous here. They, they know how they can come back and win this game. They know their abilities. They have her well, right there. Driving. Yeah. Can't get the bucket to fall, but gets fouled. Jessica Carruthers on her way to the basket. We'll see who the foul is on. And something Doug brought up. She, and I've seen this every time I've watched her, she has like a lot of energy and fitness. And, and that's, you, at the end of games like this, it's very important. Yeah, that's what you want out of your point guard. She's very good at changing direction and changing speeds, and she's very good at finishing possessions. 
and making free throws. Well, that's one way to finish possession. What we say about 87, 88 percent from the line. I mean, that's. I don't even. I, I don't yes. even know who else is shooting at that stat this year. Yeah. Ice Automatic. in her veins. Six of six from the line tonight. Again, I'm just, I've also been impressed with Lake Central guards, especially their young players. Uh, what a what a great job they've done, and uh, man, this is a great experience for them. Yeah, Carruthers, by the way, with that second free throw, gives her 20 points on the night. She scored 25 in the state championship. Yeah, and it's just kind of quiet. She just keeps going and going and going. And one thing also, both these two teams are fantastic at defense. These two teams normally score Ooh, nice. at least in the 60s. Wimberley shot off the mark. Gets Comes up with the rebound, though. Uh -oh. Nice ball for it. three. Oh, Got it! My. What is she, three for three from out there? I believe so. In second half. In the second half, in the, second in the, second the fourth half. quarter in overtime for sure. That's an amazing shot right there. That might be your IKRCC play of the game. Hey, we still got we still got one minute left. A minute and a half. <laughs> an answer for Crown Point, no good. Rebound comes down to Crown Point and a foul against Lake Central. Boy, the tempo is fantastic. The crowd is fantastic. How can you not love high school basketball? That's Indiana good, basketball. Yeah, good little midseason test here for both teams and. Uh, fighting basically for the DAC championship. Correct. For the most part. You now know, that I know it, Apple's had a great start of the year, but. Now that foul is against Krieger. That is her fourth. And to the line, Lynn Smith knocks that free throw down. And this is why we, we talked about Lake Central shooting threes earlier as Lynn Smith rattles that one home. Tied up. And the threes, while they oh, weren't falling all the time for Lake Central, they're falling now in the big moments. Yeah, they're, Crown Point has consistently made free throws, like you mentioned. So, uh, again, they've been there, done this, and uh, they'll see how they react here in the last minute. Bolosnik, and they're going to call the block. That's against Zoe Wells, her second, and that's the team's tenth. It's so they a little physical out there now. A little bit. Well, I think we've talked about it. I think you got some tired legs. You know, they're, they're not as quick to move their feet to, as they were earlier in, this, in, the, in the game. So this is an automatic two. Is that the 10th the team foul? <gasps> Malaznik still can't hit on the free throws. That's one of those things that's hard for as a coach to figure out. He, she's such a good, good three-point shooter, but she's only shooting 47% from the line. You know, how, really? Yeah, how do you... That's, that's one of those things that make you scratch your head. That one goes... Yeah, that, that's, that's interesting to me, that stat. One minute here. Wimberly up against Carruthers. Yes, very. And, and, it, and we don't say enough about defense, but she's done a, a really good job on, on pressuring Jared Damas. We'll see how hard they make uh, Carruthers work to get the ball back. Ooh, that's a tough Santiago shot. Santiago oh, drops it home on the tough shot. Dang, we've we, we been left-handed up. A little left-handed runner, that's nice. Beautiful. One point lead for Crown Point, 30 seconds remain. That's this is where, bucket. this is where, Becky, you talked about the experience right here. They're all Bishop to it. the lane, Sam no good, foul rebound on, on the floor, bodies on the floor, Jared Damos with the ball, it's tied up. Possession arrow goes in favor of Crown Point. So do you need, how quick before you start fouling? You want to get a turnover, obviously, here. Well, you want to get a trap. Go for a trap. And, but then the, with your scouting report, you've got to have an idea about who you want to foul. So timeout taken by Coach Huppenthal on Lake Central. It'll be a full timeout. So let's stay here. Uh, what, I mean, if you, you guys are in the game. You're coaching, playing. One, what is Coach Huppenthal drawing up here? Well, again, I, if, if it's me, I'm going to try to... I'm going to try to get a steal in the backcourt. Yes. As soon as it gets over half court, I would foul. Correct. But I would, I would try to, I would try to trap and deny one pass away back here, uh, put pressure on the ball, make Carruthers give it up, and then maybe again once they get it over, you're going to have plenty of time. It's still uh, the worst thing could happen. Still a one possession game, but uh, once they get it over, then you got to find somebody to foul. And what, what is Coach Cyber drawing up here? Who, who does he want to give it to? Obviously, he wants to give it to Carruthers. Correct. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, she, I mean I, I, she she's just, like, shooting. I don't mean to take that from you. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. She's shooting over 85% from the line. You know, of course, you want the ball in her hands. I'm still trying to, I, I, there was a lot of contact. I'm still trying to figure out how that wasn't a foul, but they end up getting the ball back because it was a, a rebound and a jump ball. Again, I think you, you made this point earlier. Some officials, depending on where you're playing, it, it, I think they're letting them play. Well, especially at the end of the game, you kind of, you want the kids to decide it. You know, you're going to call a foul if it's there, if it's blatant. But, um, you know, as a coach, you, all you hope there is that there's some consistency. You know, would there, would there have been a call to foul there in the first quarter? That's, that would be a question I have. 18.8. It's a one-point lead for Crown Point. They have the basketball. Oop, not the inbounds comes to Elena Santiago. She gets fouled by Malaznik, mm -hmm. who that is, I believe, her fourth. have to check here so that will send a one in one situation yeah that's four on Riley Malosnik so this is a one in one and it's only 18 fouls against Lake Central she is a 77 percent free throw shooter uh, so that's uh, if you're coach side but you're okay with her being on the line there's still a lot of nerves involved but uh, uh, she's been there and uh, coach is going to try to ice her a little bit and she's two for two from the line tonight and I'm and it's going to be a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it right here. 17.3. Obviously, it's a one and one so that first, that first free throw is all at Pivotal. And again, like as you mentioned, if she makes both, the three-point game, you get 17 seconds to come down the lane. Lake Central, I put it into the hands of Riley Malaznik on the three-point shot. Well, it, 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 if coaches right now is right, is right enough to play, if we're down two, you run this play. If we're down three, run this play. I think there's enough time on the clock. Even if she makes both, you don't have to go down and chuck a three yet. Correct. I think you have time to go get to the get to the basket, get to get you know get to the rim, try to get a layup, and then it's at at, at that point either you're going to finish. If you if you don't make it, you got to foul right away. Or if you get the offensive board, you got to kick out for a three, which is a really good time to shoot the three anyway. Becky, if she makes both, do you go full court press? If you're crown point, yes. Free throw, no good. Rebounded by Wimberly. Oh, they fouled and a her. foul. Well, because their, their free throws aren't going in. <laughs> it's Wimberly. Here we go. So Wimberly to the line. We said coming in, she's shooting 57. We'll call it 58% from the line. The foul was on Santiago, by the way, her first of the game. This is one of the, in practice, and we would do drills like this where it's so important to make the first. You know, we would say, yeah. It's the back of the iron. You make the first, the second one's easy. Now this one's real tight, but uh, the importance of that first one is very, you can't put enough pressure on it. Okay, just for conversations, because we got guys checking, or players checking in and out. Do you maybe think about missing to try to get your shot to put it layup? No, I, just for conversation. No. I want to. I'm getting the nastiest looks over here. No. <laughs> well, no, because what, it's are you in the wrestling? Well, you I, I, I'm head just or asking. It, I know it's Friday, Mike, but you've you been <laughs> I, hitting the bottle already. <laughs> no. But you could take the lead if you get the layup. No. I. It's just for conversation. Oh, Free throw, no good. You're gonna get a foul, get a trap. Yeah. And a foul on Wimberly. But you don't want her to be oh, the that's one a shooting. Big rebound. You see who Crown Point got the ball to right away. Absolutely. <laughs> Missed free throws. That's the big number for Coach uh, Huppenthal tonight. So that's that's our freshman who's probably got a ton of athletic skill, but yes. hasn't refined her shot yet. So. All summer long, that's well, what I'm doing, shooting free throws. And again, we talked about this. Freshmen, these are, I mean, you talk about pressure free throws. Even seniors don't even hit these sometimes. Right, and, you know, it comes down to those are the details uh, in, in, that a coach has got to spend so much time on a lot of big things, this play, that play. But and this is, again, a one-and-one. One. Only 19 fouls. She has yet to hit the rim on a free throw. Yeah, I, I'm automatic. just nice one, but, uh, <laughs> But that's what I was saying. You have to make time for free throws, and that's one of the things that they can do on their extra time and, uh, and put those uh, kind of pressures on yourself. I know I mentioned this earlier. Um, a girl in, in college, I think her dad threw a 1,000 a day softballs. Uh -huh. I, I'm pretty sure she probably grew up and shot a 1,000 free throws free a day. Throws. 
I, I, I'm going to ask her that. It, it's, it's, it amazes me. There's two things. That, whenever I talk to the teams that I, that I coach, two things that I always harp on. Free throws, first three minutes of the third quarter. Those are the, to me, those are the two biggest parts of a basketball game. Hit your free throws. That first three minutes, what energy do you have? Do you want it or do you not? Yeah. As a, a, again, same thing. As a coach, I, I, at the end of the game, I look at a couple numbers on the stat sheet. Who, who made more free throws? Who, who had less turnovers? And who had more offensive rebounds? Those are the three numbers I looked at. If you look at those three numbers, more times than not, whoever wins those little battles will win the game at the end of the night. So Carruthers goes to the line to shoot one more. Where she is seven of seven from the line. So again, and the likelihood that she makes this, it's a three point lead. Lake Central has the full length of the floor and plenty of time, 13.5. Yeah. Um, if you're crown point, you're just going to try to get the ball to turn a little bit. Don't allow them a straight line to the free throw lane. Um, they don't have to go for a three right away, uh, but just like this, they're pressuring the ball a little bit. Now you, buy, you have to go through a three now. you got to go. A Bishop, Bishop it wants it or doesn't know who to give it to. And she's in the three-point line. Oh, Step point for three. Up. Air ball, and that's the ball game. That's a great effort, though, by Lake Central. They got nothing to be ashamed of there. In overtime, Crown Point gets the win, 51-48. We'll step aside, we'll crunch the numbers. We got awards to hand out. You're watching Game 9, the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. From schools to stadiums, hospitals and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. It's been said that one man's junk is another man's treasure. But at Total Disposal, your junk is our junk. Think of Total Disposal as that key player that has several options, commercial, residential, or hand off your junk at our Blaine Street Partners Transfer Station. Total Disposal is more than a service provider. We are an innovator for a sustainable tomorrow, well beyond the curb. For a complete list of services, go to totaldisposal.com. Honesty and dependability, that's the Total Disposal promise. Did you know? They decorate over 210,000 cakes a year. Did you know? Their butcher will cut your meat your way. Did you know? They have trained floral designers in store. Did you know? They will make your wedding cake. Did you know? They have a variety of deli bakeable entrees. Did you know? Their online app has coupons and so much more. Who does that? Strack and Van Till. Now you know. Blythe's Athletics in Valparaiso, whose team has been serving your team since 1959, is a leader in athletic apparel and equipment sales. Whether it's off the rack or customized to your specifications, Blythe's has the products and staff to serve you best. Trophies, embroidering, screen printing, athletic shoes, anything you're looking for, you'll find at Blythe's. Visit them today at TeamBlythe's.com, where the athlete shops. Welcome back to game night here on the Region Sports Network. Welcome to the post-game show right here at Lake Central High School. Michael Brander here along with Doug Nelson, Becky Matea, as we just saw a fantastic ball game. 51-48, the win for Crown Point over Lake Central. We said this one was going to be fun. It did not disappoint. Yeah, what an amazing game. And uh, again, being so early in the season, uh, this, this will be a great learning tool from both teams. Uh, Coach Seirat, their, their team was pushed to the limit. You know, number one team in Indiana pushed to the limit. Um, Stoddard got in a little foul trouble. Um, of course, they have, you know, Carruthers to go to when times get tough, but uh, they, they replied to the, to the adversity tonight and, and, and came out with a, a road conference win, which is never easy. Correct. Your thoughts on the game? It was a great game. Um, 
And I think we talked about just the, the, the experience and maturity level that Crown Point probably would pull it out, but nothing to hang your heads about for Lake Central. And uh, the, little, the little things, um, the free throws, you got to hit your free throws at the end. That was not a little thing in this game. That was, <laughs> <laughs> that was big for Crown Point tonight versus what Lake Central was doing. I didn't add up the numbers after I had crunched them earlier, but I just got the point totals. But it was not good for Lake Central, to say the least. And that's really, I mean, when you come down to a game that's a three-point game, and you left so many. At one point, it was two for 11, and it, 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 that number grew. It yeah. ended up being three for, let's say, 15 or more. Yes. That, that boiled it down. You even make just five of those. I mean, that's the difference in the ball game. Yeah. For sure. It's those little things you take them for granted, and they just accumulate. Yeah, let, okay, let's go ahead and give our awards away. By the way, we're on camera. Did you guys realize oh. that? Yeah. <laughs> so we're looking at you. All, all, all eyes on you guys. <laughs> it's time to name our Crowd Company's Lantern Man Superhero of the Game. The Crowd Companies are proud to recognize the superheroes on the basketball court. Uh, this one seems pretty easy to me. This, you have to go with the Gatorade Player of the Year from last year, Jessica Carruthers. Like I said, she has the ball in her hands at the end of the game because she's shooting so well from the free throw line. She handles the ball. She makes the big shot. She's, she's been there uh, like her other seniors. You know, they've won four, conference, four conferences in a row, the conference championships. And, uh, you know, like I said, when, I, when, the, when there's talk with her about is she going to be Miss Basketball, uh, is she going to be All-State, uh, you know, on the in, Indiana-Kentucky All-Star teams, um, I, I just say she's a, she's a flat-out winner. Yeah. You know, she's, yeah, she's, a, she's, a, going, she's a contender. Going to IUPUI, and uh, she's she done an amazing job here tonight. Mm -hmm. More importantly, she had 22 points, and she was. Can you guess how many how she was from the line? I'm, I'm, I think she was perfect from the line. She's she's shooting 88 percent. I don't know anybody else who's doing that. Guys or girls, and even even collegially. You are correct. She was 100 percent from the line. Eight of eight from the line. There, I mean, that's the differences in a ball game right there. So certainly worth. Uh, Crowd Company's Lantern Man, superhero of the game. Let's go ahead and look at the IKORCC play of the game, brought to you by the Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio Regional Council of Carpenters. Learn more at IKORCC.com. We went with the uh, uh, Crown Point was actually behind at the time. Fourth quarter, uh, Zoe Wells came in and got a steal and a layup there from the press break. It was fourth quarter? Yes, it yeah, was. About 20 seconds left, and uh, that was her job, and as, as soon as the ball possession changed, she subbed out and you know, got an, uh, an ovation from the Crown Point crowd. So uh, that's the play of the game. That's the little things that add up. And, uh, the, you know, she accepts her role as a defensive player for Crown Point, and she did her job tonight. Only points she scored of the night, but they were pivotal Huge. points for Huge. Crown Point. Huge. Pretty important Huge. points. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Perfect candidate for our perfect uh, choice for our IKORCC play of the game. Now it's time to name the uh, Region Sports Network Blue Collar Player of the Game, brought to you by the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Becky, where are we going with this one? We were talking. Um, Doug's going to say it, but okay. besides her, I've got to say all the LC girls battled, and there was great shots by uh, Malushnik. Riley Malosnik. And Vanessa. Yeah. But I really. think, um, if I don't know if we're looking at rebounds. This girl had a couple good rebounds and putbacks. Yep. Um, so. Yeah, we're going to go with number 35, Aaliyah Krieger. Um, did an amazing job of guarding Stoddard tonight, giving up That's about four or thing. five inches, <laughs> you know, pushing her off off the block as much as they could, and uh, she's going to sleep well tonight. But she's she did an amazing job, and uh, she she exemplifies the blue collar uh, idea here tonight. Yeah, I perfect candidate. I mean, a lot of choices we can go down this this line, for, especially for Lake Central. If you're looking at their side, a lot of battling. I mean, Vanessa Wimberly, fantastic on defense. A freshman guarding Jessica Carruthers, a senior. Uh, and she just, I mean, she really, I mean, yes, 22 points for Carruthers, but that's just a, a pure experience. But Vanessa Wimberly played a great game on defense as well. How good are they going to be? It's, it, it's gonna time be, will it's, tell. Yeah, it's going to be fun to see her develop next uh, two or three years with Bishop, with Malosnik, you know, and uh, it's going to be fun to follow those guys uh, and see if they can make their mere stamp in, in, in the region basketball and make a trip down to Indy maybe here in the next couple of years. For sure. Becky, it was great having you with us tonight. Thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a, it was a great time. Great to have you. Doug, I see you all the time. So it's, <laughs> yeah, whatever. It's good. Good to see you, too. Uh, I don't know if I will be on, the, on a broadcast before the holidays, so I wish everyone a... What's that? There's no more before the holidays. So this is it, folks. We want to wish everyone from the RSN crew a great holiday season coming up here. We will have plenty more after the holidays, though, so make sure you stay tuned here on the Region Sports Network. It's been a great night. 51-48 the final. You've been watching Game Night on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town.